So here in Final Cut Pro 10, we're going to be focusing on the position tool. And we're going to have a quick first look at the select tool just to see how that works. And then we'll go on to look at the position tool so we can see the differences between those two different tools. So if we come down to our tools menu here, we've got the select tool currently selected and we can see the other different tools that we have available to us. Right now, we're going to keep with the select tool and just have a look at how it works. So the main point of the select tool is that when we make a change to our clip on the timeline, it's making changes to the timeline duration. So if I hold down shift and tap Z to zoom to view the whole timeline, then you can see that when I move this out point here, if you look at the right hand side of my timeline here, it's actually changing the duration of the entire timeline. And also if we, with the select tool, pull a clip up, then it will pull in the end of that timeline. Okay, so I'm just gonna undo that. And now if I jump down, to the position tool and I'm just going to zoom in to do this. If we grab one of the out points here you can see that instead of changing the duration of the timeline what it actually does is it fills that space from the movement with a slug so a clip that has no content within it. So the same applies if we lift a clip from the primary storyline. So if I click on this clip and pull up then it's going to lift that clip up from the primary storyline and leave a slug there so that the, the duration of the project doesn't take any time. The same thing happens when we delete a clip. So if we highlight a clip normally and press the backspace key on the keyboard, then it will pull in the content down the timeline, even when we're using the position tool. So I'm just going to undo that. Instead of using the backspace tool, I'm going to use the delete key and just tap that. And you can see now it does a lift delete where it lifts that clip from the timeline and leaves a slug of the same duration in its place. This is really great if you want to keep the timing down your timeline the same, but you need to make these kinds of changes. So again, you can see here, when I'm making changes to that end point of this clip, it's keeping the rest of the timeline intact. Now I'm just going to zoom out a little bit here so we can see a bit more of the timeline. And I'm just going to use backspace to delete these slugs that we have here and show you one more thing that we can do with the position tool. So if we have a look at this small clip within these two clips here, I'm just going to zoom in. Okay, if I grab the position tool and then move my playhead to the left or to the right, you can see what it's doing here is actually moving that clip, but without changing the clip at all. Okay, so essentially what's happening here, I'll just do this again, is it's adding a slug at the end there, okay, but changing the out point of this incoming clip. And let's just zoom out there. So that's a quick overview of how the position tool works. Essentially, you're able to move clips around in your timeline without changing the duration of the timeline. Actually, there's one more thing that I want to show you here. I'm just going to grab this clip here. If we highlight a clip here with the position tool, we can use the period and the comma as well to nudge that clip by one frame at a time. So you can see I can nudge that clip left and right, and then it creates that slug in there, which we can remove by pulling the end point of the next clip back in. Okay. So again, when we're working with the position tool, we're able to change the duration of a clip without changing the duration of the timeline. It will put a slug in place or overwrite a previous clip as we're making those changes in order to, to keep the duration of your overall timeline intact. So I hope that quick tutorial has been useful. And the position tool is certainly a handy tool for performing some edits when you do want to move clips on the timeline or lift them from the timeline, but keep the rest of the timeline in place particularly if you want to keep the timing with music or voice and that type of thing. So I hope you found this tutorial useful and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.